Hello guys and welcome to another list from Oscar Cooper. I hope you've all been well. Yeah, we're looking at the Far Cry games now. Uh, we're going to group them all together. We're going to rank them. I'm going to put my weakest first and we're going to have the number one winner at the end. I love the series. I love the sandbox elements to it. I love its first person mechanics. I love how good the writing is in some of these games and how strong the characters are and, and where they're all set, etc. So I wanted to rank them all up, work out which one's the best. Enjoy, guys. Awesome. Don't worry about a thing, my boy. This will soon be behind us, and we'll be off on a grand adventure. Because I have cleared my calendar for you. You and I are gonna tear shit up! Should I stay or should I go? So we're going to start with 4, a game that it was the first of the sort of current gen Far Cry games. And it was a big deal for me because I, you know, the previous games I, I really, really enjoyed. And so I was very much looking forward to seeing what this game looked like on a really nice powerful system, especially the PlayStation 4. It's set in a Himalayan sort of mock country, almost Nepalese. Um, you're up in the mountains, there's a lot of foliage, there's a lot of really cool wildlife. Stuff like elephants and tigers and leopards, etc. And there was a, a few changes made to the system with this one one of which is the auto drive setup which we'll go into in a minute but another one was just really just how busy the damn game is I mean there's just so much going on and there's a lot of weapons and a lot of things to do and side quests etc one of the Far Cry traits is that it's a it's a very occupying game where you will have side quests and main quests but also sort of going around the map exploring and of course you know Ubisoft's famous tower setup is predominant here ie you you climb up and down towers to improve the map visibility and open up quests etc but this game got some really cool mechanics it's got that amazing fire mechanic which we'll look at shortly and of course just some awesomely crazy weapons that, that really really ruin everyone's lives um, one of the areas that I enjoy with the game is the customization on weapons and, and they take this really seriously I, I love being able to attach and, and sort of perk up a weapon and also give it a nice cool paint job I get really attached to certain guns and I want to personalize them and it does that very well here it also does a huge map very well so so this is one of the larger Far Cry games and the map is just crazy and also its location. Now I recently went to Nepal, um, this is obviously a little bit higher up the Himalayan uh, mountains in, in regards to structure but, it, but a lot of the religious uh, elements of the game, a lot of the structures when it comes to the monasteries and a, and a lot of the languages is, is, is quite similar and I was really impressed with, with how they laid that down without coming across as, uh, you know, people who were ill-informed of another culture, it was, it was really awesome and the temples are really dark and this game's got this real spiritual vibe to it there's these things called the Shangri-La missions which are which are really crazy they're really like trippy but not as much as some of the other games this one's quite grounded the combat in the series as always is extremely strong and I think that's what this the series is is well known for it, it is incredible combat uh, and really quick on the fly uh, weapon swapping and just massive projectile weapons RPGs taking down vehicles just causing a lot of havoc think just cause uh, on roids one of the other things I want to point out is the guy on the radio. I love the guy on the radio in this game. I've got a little clip from you here in a minute. But uh, Far Cry 4, first on the list, is a pretty damn awesome game. The word for undesirable. Shorten the word undesirable and just call it undies. Yeah, undies. Because undies rhymes with chuddies. And both of those things I don't like. I don't like dirty chuddies and I definitely don't like undies. So we should call it undies. Like, hey, there's an undie coming over there. Let's stay away from them. Hey, that guy's dirty chuddies. So next up is Far Cry Primal, a game I was a little reluctant to get involved with because I kind of thought it was dressed up, you know, DLC, sold as a standalone package, but the first thing I clocked when I put this in my machine was, was how incredible it looks. It's the lighting engine and the Jurassic foliage and that sort of world that it's based in is is fucking breathtaking I shit you not I am not I am not understanding that at all that it's unbelievably pretty this game just walking through these forests and and existing with those new sounds from the creatures and and it's kind of alien but it but it's familiar because of course everything is is Jurassic and, and bigger and meaner and crazier 
The game is obviously a big step away from the high-tech, uh, bullet-crazy uh, other Far Cry games. So it, I, for me, I was I was worried that it wouldn't carry over too well. But it's absolutely brilliant. Um, it's it's got a very sort of visceral setup with the weapons themselves. They're they're, they're almost melee uh, focused. There are some range and and, and all, all kinds of other options with, with deploying animals as your weapons. We'll, we'll look at that in a second. But it's um it's a game that, that I was very pleasantly surprised by. I love those ragdoll physics on that on that bore going down the hill there. That's that's pretty awesome. And 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 I know I just thought yes I'm I'm really enjoying this. I, I thought how are they going to do the characters? How are they going to make everything uh, you know fleshed out? And, and they do a really good job. One of the things I spotted was a really good day and night transition. So the night time's got different animals in it, all, all, all kinds of different setups. You've got to take your torch around, otherwise you're going to get eaten alive by wolves. And also the, the characters are mad. Check this guy out. As with a lot of the other games on this list, it also doesn't hold back with its trippy craziness. And of course, there's a there's a big tribal uh, vibe with this game also, and it's and it hangs itself off the fact that you can train animals, all kinds of animals, and have them working for you, especially the saber-toothed tiger. It's amazing, and and it's really awesome to help out people on side quests in different villages. There's a big tribal thing going on. There's a factions, and and there's also cannibals in the game that, that are genuinely really weird. At to you know, to watch them eating bodies as you approach, and it's just it gets the hairs on the back of your neck up, and and it also gives you motivation to to slaughter them all in cold blood without any remorse whatsoever. Um, again, I think that this Far Cry game isn't one of the strongest available, but if you're if you're liking what you're seeing, or like me, are a big fan of the series, don't be afraid of this. It's very good, and you've got an, a buddy system that's been introduced as well, which is which gets stronger the more re further down the list we go. But it's but there's three pillars for this game it's looks it's innovative uh, setup with with how it works in the Jurassic period and also it's very strong on character development and character building there's, there's some really cool non-player characters in here and loads of motivation and and there's also just some some really cool ideas with with how you would put a game that's based so far back in time in in the Far Cry engine it really works so yeah it's Far Cry 5's turn uh, the most recent game on the list and uh, Holy shit is this game good looking. I'm not too sure what sort of PlayStation Pro support it offers, I haven't looked into it, but gobsmacked at how well uh, they've done this this America backcountry setup with the with the trees and the light and the forests and stuff and, and just the big open areas. Also the characters are brilliant. I love the character dialogue. Who gives a fuck what I'm saying? I'll show you. Come on! So this game's very character heavy and very dialogue heavy in, in a good way and, and I commend the, the developers for, for going in the direction they did with the subject matter of this game. It's basically about a religious cult, uh, a Christian religious cult as well, which, which probably ruffled a lot of feathers in, in, in the Bible Belt. And uh, I do have to say this and it kind of it gets a bit controversial, but um, there's, you know, there's a few religions out there that wouldn't cope with this sort of lampooning and, and I think that it's good that, that this didn't backfire for them and you know there were very little complaints I think that shows uh, you know quite a lot of maturity uh, from, from a lot of directions um, but anyway it's uh, it's bat shit crazy this game this game has just gone off the hook it it gets you doing stuff that you really don't feel too comfortable with sometimes i mean it's, it just goes mad and and what you come across and what you get involved in is nuts i'm i'm fighting zombie balls at a farm here and and just there was also enemies running around as well trying to kill me and, and it's, it's, it's mind poppingly crazy. I do love the perk and perk tree as well, that's still there, that's still cemented in with you know a lot of uh, RPG elements shall we say. Uh, and of course they've, they've borrowed this Horizon Zero Dawn sort of crafting on the fly which is great, a really great addition. The map is awesome as well, the map is huge and they've, and they've placed mini bosses or sub bosses in certain districts so that you can sort of take them down at your own free pace, that's really cool, that's nice nice open world setup but um, yeah I, it, you, uh, you know some of the stuff you have to shoot or some of the stuff you have to do is uh, this is not a vegans game I'll give you that much and uh, the, the 
crazy self-awareness with the sort of hick culture, uh, with with sort of back backwater America is brilliant. They really they really hit the nail on the head. Some of the dialogue that you hear people talking about when you're creeping up on them is is really funny. There's also quite a good ranking system with the enemies as well. There's these things called cultists, which are, are sort of slightly higher ranked, and, and they'll be a bit more of a bitch to kill. And what it, I think is important is they haven't ruined the Far Cry trait, which is, you know, tagging enemies, taking things down a, 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 in your own way. It's very much a sandbox game in that respect, and that's one of the major pulls for the series, I think, for everybody, is that you approach a situation how you want to, and this game has said, look, have loads more options, have loads more weapons, have loads more stuff, and, and, and just go ham. And, it, and it's amazing, it, it really allows you to do that. A bit like Far Cry 4, this one is quite uh, vehicular, meaning it's quite uh, aerial. So there's a lot of air vehicles in there and you can fly around a lot more. Check the way that that guy pops out, that, that flamethrower guy, I just that never got boring. Um, Customisation's pretty big as well. U Ubisoft have gone really crazy with uh, Ubisoft Arcade, which is basically offering user-generated content for people to play. So you, there's a first-person construction kit within this game, which is mind-blowingly amazing. You know, people who have wanted to develop or make games, they, they, they now can with this. Um, and of course there's loads of DLC that's come out, loads of DLC that's come out for it, there's some Mars attacks, there's even a zombie apocalypse one that's come out, and they haven't reviewed very well, I think they're not as strong as the base game, uh, and the base game is extremely strong. I wanted to show you some of the shop options as well, there a lot of just cause similarities here where you go to terminals, uh, you can purchase a vehicle with the in-game currency and you can customise it, um, that vehicle is then uh, spawnable from that point on and you can get in it and muck around it. Uh, and uh, you know, some of the vehicles are better than others, some come with, with weapons, etc. And there's a lot of challenges based around the vehicles dotted around the map as well, which would involve flying and racing. And I love the shine and the detail on, the, on that helicopter. Aerial combat is a bit, <laughs> it's a bit crazy. I, I, just, uh, I just love having a laugh with the engine, you know, and having a, a great time with this game. Now, check out what I caught these two cows doing at the end here. To my father's black card, to my black card. God, I haven't done Sambuca since I was 20 years old. So yeah, my greatest Far Cry game is Far Cry 3. That is actually a previous generation Far Cry, but we've got a um, classic edition which has come out on the PlayStation 4. Now, this hasn't had a graphical overhaul, not by any stretch of the imagination at all. So if you're playing a current gen Far Cry game like 5 and you jump onto this, you're going to be like, oof, that's painful. But there's a few things you need to remember with this game, and I'm, I'm going to go into them in a second, but one of the things I'm going to point out is this has probably got one of the best villains of the whole series and maybe the best villain in a modern computer game full stop. You want me to slice you open like I did your friend? Shut the fuck up! Okay? I'm the one with the fucking dick. Look at me. Look me in the fucking eye. Hey! You fuck! Look me in the eye! You're my bitch. I rule this fucking kingdom. Shut the fuck up or you die. So I think what, what happened with the series is is that all of the previous games, probably bar Primal, have tried to emulate the greatness that Far Cry 3 achieved with itself. And, and, and the greatness was all about the villain and all about the amazing story that, that it gave you. And the story is pretty familiar to me because it's it's really mimicking the, the beach. Now, not the film, okay, so let me repeat that. Not the film, The Beach, the book by Alex Garland. You, you really need to get that book read. If you've not gone near that book, grab it and you'll be like, holy shit, I totally see where they took a lot of their source material from. It, it, it's got incredible characters, uh, really off the wall, amazing characters. With really, Some of them have got really tragic stories. The whole idea of the island being taken over by the cartel and Avas's army is, is incredible and, and how awesome it is for that the villagers are, are sort of turning the tide on. There's basically a war going on. I actually like the colours of the game, I like the aesthetic of the game. I'm, I'm a little bit miffed that they didn't give this a full-blown, you know, remake, but I suppose it's, it's probably too soon. I mean, the game isn't really that old, but it would, would have been so nice to have it running in that modern Dunia engine. I don't know how difficult that would have been, actually, to, you know, port the game to, to true current-gen standards, but I, it still works 
for me, you know. I'm not. I, the, the, it takes a back seat. This, this, these visuals, due to the incredible story and the fact that the bass mechanics and the, the way it plays are, are untouched, um, and and everything else since has, has been trying to emulate it. You know, the the, the, the crazy wildlife attacks, the the explosive um, gameplay, the the bases that you take down, the towers that you climb up, the different regions of the island that you slowly unlock. I mean, it's still it's still there. It's still incredible. But but what what it what it really swings around on is this awesome story of of your character. I think you're called Jason. Don't quote me on that. But but what but what the premise is is you you start as this stupid uh, white collar. Um, kid who who doesn't know anything about anything his brother was was an army guy and he was just a younger brother he didn't really have a clue and, and what happens slowly through the game is that you become more and more converted to being a mass murderer and and just becoming a badass like a massive badass and and the dialogue reflects that really well and and so you have five friends i think it's five or four friends that you're sort of gradually rescuing through the storyline and 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 helping and, and getting them you know out of their hostage situations and off the island and of course you're always thinking yeah you know it will be my turn soon to, to i don't want to drop any spoilers but it would you know it will be the character's turn soon to actually leave the island and of course there's a huge sort of twist in that direction and and but it feels so good it's it's so well done um also the the game has got this drug theme in it that is really f full on like i've not played a game that leans so heavily on hallucinogenic drugs the taking of drugs that the, what what drugs can do to you i mean the whole game actually revolves around drugs the shipping of drugs you know how they can just ruin a society and and how they dominate some countries I economy you know it's crazy it's there's some really big topics in this game and uh, they're really well handled and and they're also handled on a granular level with the character and character development it's incredible and uh, yeah i know you're probably thinking why the hell has he gone and put a previous gen far cry game at the top of a list beating stuff like prime or beating stuff like four but if you played this right the way through like i did on the 360 you it, it will stick with you i know it will the music's brilliant the um the the theme and the outro music at the end of the game is generally generally uh, uh, you know uh, brought some emotion up with me it, and very few first person shooters will ever get near that for me they 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 don't offer uh, enough substance for me to get emotionally involved and i but i was and i and i really felt uh, what this main character was going through how he was evolving uh, and changing to fit the situation he was in some of the some of the trippy scenes are, are so full blown. I mean, I think the last time I had this much sort of darkness and sort of craziness with a first person shooter was Max Payne One. I remember Max Payne One having all these mad cutscenes and and all the the baby crying and the, and the whole situation in the house. Do you remember with his wife and that was really harrowing stuff. This this sort of, this sort of borrows from that a little bit. It's, it's slightly more light hearted and a bit more drug induced, but it's just incredible and, and a really bold move from Ubisoft to, to, to do that to to show people you know the other side of life that, that how fucked up people can get and and how incredible uh, uh, you know vas character is I, I, I've barely shown you any footage of him because all, all of his dialogue is is kind of spoilerish and and you should just go and listen to it for yourself it, the actor that they face mapped is I forget his name but he really took the role seriously there was some there was some genuine acting in there and uh, it, it will stay with you this game it really will and, and and what's happened is it's just this formula has been diluted and diluted again with the sequels and I just don't think I don't think Ubisoft will ever get back to the heights that, that Far Cry 3 gave us and, and of course it was a it was just a real splash in the industry I remember at the time it came out on the 360 there was not really anything that, 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 that did what it did and, and, and gave us the villain like that and it's weird because you start sympathizing with the villain in this weird way you start liking him and and it's like how what how could i like such a despicable human being but you but you crave to keep seeing him in the game and you, and you want to hear what he's got to say you know his his philosophy on life one of the best quotes from him is 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 
the definition of madness. He keeps trying to put his finger on, on, on being crazy. And he said that the, the definition of madness is doing the same thing day in and day out and expecting there to be change. And that, and that is such a, a, a solid philosophy on, on, on life, isn't it? You know, you get, you get people who are just like, why is my life so stagnated? Why, why is nothing happening to me? Why is nothing changing? And it's because you're not breaking your routine. You're not thinking out of the box. You're not approaching new, uh, you know, tasks and problems. You're not, you're just in your comfort zone. And if you do that, you're going to go round and round in a circle. So, you know, don't complain. Uh, because you are not you are not taking steps to change things. Uh, sorry to get all philosophical on you, but that's uh, you know that that really stayed with me that line, and I think I think it's a, an incredible bit of writing from from the guys at Ubisoft and the team that made this. Uh, you know they'll go down in they'll go down in history as making such an incredible game. And so Far Cry 3 won my list, uh, guys. I am on the case with some more couch co-op. Don't get me wrong. I've got Divinity Original Sin coming through soon, and it's Game of the Year time soon. Oh my god, game of the year. I will see you all down there.